name is Dr. Rita Scully and I'm a lecturer at Limerick Institute of Technology in Ireland. This video is on renewable energies and this is the first of two videos on renewable energies. In this video I will introduce and explain the energy that's held with inside the earth. I will compare renewable and non-renewable resources and I'll also discuss the advantages and limits of renewable energies. In the second video on renewable energies I will discuss geothermal and solar power and also the periodic table as to how that links to the structure of the earth and how the periodic table shows some of the elements that are used in semiconductors. What you know. In order to assist you in understanding this video, it would be useful to review two other videos. Video 1, Greenhouse Effect, and Video 8, The Biogeochemical Cycle. Key Words. In this video, a number of key words are used. Energy can be defined as the ability to move or change matter. Put another way, it is the ability to do work. Renewable energy. They never run out. In most cases, these resources are replaced as quickly as they are used. Examples would be wind, hydro, geothermal and solar. Non-renewable energies. These are used faster than they can be replaced, like oil, gas and peat. Terawatt. This is the measurement of electricity. It is a unit of power. The terawatt is equal to 1 trillion watts of power. Everything that moves or changes in any way from plants to animals to machines needs energy. Our body gets energy from food. Cooking food Powering a refrigerator, a freezer, TV, phone, all take energy. Think about all of the things you use each day that require energy. Travelators, lifts, lights, air conditioning, heating, preparing food, or powering a city all require energy to be available. Transport, industry, robotics, lighting, all of these are going to use energy in small quantities and in huge quantities. The energy demand continues for industry, transport, farming, manufacturing. Because billions of people around the world use energy, there is a huge need for resources to provide all of this energy. Here on this chart, we're looking at the energy transition timeline. On the vertical, we're seeing the various years move by. We're starting in 2016 and ending in 2050. Here we see an estimate of the peak primary energy supply. In the green below we see the rise of renewable energies and the corresponding decrease of non-renewable energies. 
we also see various peaks oil peak transport energy demand peak natural gas peak the aim by 2050 is to have a 50 percent mix of energy from renewable and non-renewable resources. What we want to know. There is energy held with inside the earth. The earth is made up of a number of layers. Starting from the inside, there's the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Except for the crust, no one has ever explored the layers in person. In fact, the deepest humans have drilled is just over 12 kilometers into the crust. That drilling took 20 years to complete. The Earth's crust is like the shell of a hard-boiled egg. It's extremely thin. It's cold and brittle compared to what lies beneath it. The crust is made up of relatively light elements, silica, aluminium and oxygen. It also varies in thickness. Under the oceans, there could be as little as five kilometers or just over three miles thick. Whereas beneath the continents, the crust could be as much as 30 to 70 kilometers thick. The next layer below that is the mantle. That's close to 3,000 kilometers thick. It's the Earth's thickest layer. It starts below the surface and it's mostly made up of iron, magnesium, silicon and is dense, hot and semi-solid. The outer core is made up from iron and nickel but it's in liquid form. It is heated largely by the radioactive decay of the elements uranium and thorium. This liquid churns in huge turbulent currents. And then the inner core. This is a solid metal ball. It has a radius of approximately 1,220 kilometers. It's about three quarters of the size of the moon and it is extremely dense, mostly iron and nickel. It is also intensely hot, up to 5,400 degrees Celsius, almost as hot as the surface of the Sun. Here we can see how heat flows from that extremely hot inner core out to the outer core, the mantle and even out towards the crust. In video 2 of Renewable Energies we will look at how that heat is harnessed in geothermal pumps and heat centers. As we mentioned earlier, there are two types of energy sources, renewable and non-renewable. Renewable energy sources include sun, water, wind, biomass and geothermal. These resources are unaffected by use. Solar, wind and water can be replaced almost at the same rate that they are used. Non-renewable sources are fossil fuels. The most common examples of these are coal, oil, peat and natural gas. If we trace the energy of all resources back to its origin, they come from the sun. Renewable energies can also have problems. If we cut down too many trees and we don't replace them fast enough, we can contribute to the greenhouse effect. We might need grains to be used for food 
rather than biofuels. And some renewable resources have been too expensive to be widely used or have caused environmental problems when they have been installed. Many of these renewable energy sources need equipment to be manufactured like solar panels and wind turbines and the manufacturing process uses up energy. So it can take a number of years for a renewable energy production to pay back the energy used in its manufacture. As the technology improves, more people will use renewable energy and the prices may go down. But we do need to consider practical areas, how we turn a resource into a usable form. And the energy equation, if we get less energy from burning or using a fuel than it took to make it, then maybe it's not a practical source. Consider the heavy engineering required to create a dam or a hydro station. The water is re a renewable resource, but the construction needed to turn the resource into a renewable form of energy is not renewable. some discussions that you can consider. Can you think of any issues that might be worth discussing around renewable energies and non-renewable energies? What about the factors that you would consider important in deciding how helpful an energy resource is? If using an energy resource created large amounts of pollution should we still consider using it? Do all fossil fuels affect the environment equally? Maybe consider the extraction methods used, the pollution effects and the employment provided. There are a lot of items to consider when we think about renewable and non-renewable energy sources. what you have learned. Everything that moves or changes in any way from plants to animals to machines need energy. The earth is composed of four distinct layers. They are the inner core, the outer core, the mantle and the crust. There is a huge need for resources to provide all of the energy requirements. If you trace the energy of all resources back to its origin, they would come from the sun. There are two categories of energy, renewable and non-renewable. Renewable energies will never run out. In most cases, these resources are replaced as quickly as they are used. Wind, solar, geothermal, hydro are examples. Non-renewable energies are used faster than they can be replaced. Oil, coal, gas and peat are examples of these.